Have you ever watched something and thought, I'm not enjoying this, but I enjoy other things like this. Why isn't this working for me? At first blush, The Garden of Sinners has a lot of the elements I like in anime. An often deliberate pace, punctuated by feverish action, distinctive characters that aren't excessively weird, and some layers of philosophy. Based on a series of light novels by Fate Stay Night writer Kinoko Nasu, The Garden of Sinners, or Kara no Kyokai, is actually a mini-series of seven roughly one-hour movies that were released between 2007 and 2013. The first problem for me appeared in the animation of the opening scenes, <clears throat> after the credits. Even for anime of this era, there are a lot of still shots or shots of characters where nothing moves except for their lips. Now, I'm an anime fan. I'm used to that, but there is a lot of that. And the second problem relates to a little secret of animation. Look at my hand. When was the last time you saw actual animation of a character doing this, holding something up to their lips with their fingers? I bet you can't think of one. If a character is eating, we all, almost always see their hand hovering some distance from their mouth or close to it. Why? Look at how the shapes of my fingers are changing as my hand moves. It's actually very hard to not just render all of that in 2D, but also do that in a way that looks natural. The hand doesn't just rotate. The fingers are also flexing and shifting under the weight of whatever's in the hand. In the Garden of Sinners, when the characters do move, a lot of their movements get little details wrong, just you know, fingers a little bit too short or whatever. Nothing major, but just enough to be noticeably off model. And this makes the animation neither completely naturalistic nor stylized. Further, the Garden of Sinners visuals set itself in a gritty, realistic world. While there are supernatural elements, the film does an admirable job of matching foreground colors to backgrounds making the characters feel like they're actually standing in a corner of a room or standing on a street corner. But because that animation is often just a little bit off, I felt myself pulled out of the environment, realizing that I'm watching anime characters. Thankfully, the animators uh, completely avoid any of these standard anime visual cliches like nosebleeds or face faults, which would feel completely utterly out of place in a gritty, grounded environment, you know, like this one. There are two major action sequences, which are given commendably high budgets. Unfortunately, in both cases, they involve supernatural characters with powers that aren't defined until that point. See, action sequences are meant to provoke an adrenaline response, and adrenaline comes from Fundamental crises of survival or identity. Will someone die? Will someone get badly maimed? Will the hero be prevented from accomplishing a task that is very important to him or her? All that is bound up in the action and what the action can represent in the plot. But when we don't know what the characters in an action sequence are capable of, the adrenaline just doesn't fire very strongly. Now, if an action sequence can't do that, it should tell us something about the character. Basically, who protects whom. While the first action sequence in the film does tell us something about the protagonist, the second doesn't. Worse, the second uses extremely high-budget action animation of the protagonist leaping and dodging with highly dexterous movements to attack stationary targets. Seven of them in a row. After the first three, her actions make her look kind of foolish. Why is she exerting so much energy on stationary targets? It just doesn't seem reasonable. But that's not all the Garden of Sinners offers us. Between the action sequences, we get scenes of the teenage girl protagonist and an adult mentor woman discussing this sort of case they're on. And the latter character often offers some philosophical theories about what's going on. There's quite a lot of philosophy in this, but I found myself tuning it out. Why didn't I enjoy the quiet philosophy of this the way I did in, say, Serial Experiments Lane? Well, 
Lane introduces philosophy from multiple characters, pretty much all of whom are shown to be wrong about that at least once. Further, and more importantly, the characters act in ways that agree with the philosophy they describe. In Garden of Sinners, while a few characters do offer some of these philosophical explanations for others' behavior, they do so passively. They're just saying, this is why this might have happened. They don't appear to care about the ideas they offer, nor do they personify those beliefs, which means I found myself not caring much either. And this is another central problem. Um, of the three primary characters, the protagonist has a quite closed personality, another is just cool and detached, while the third is clearly the emotive human heart of the group. Unfortunately, that final character is only involved in the very first and last scenes of the film, leaving us primarily with two distant people who almost never actually react to anything. It's hard to get emotionally reacted and emotionally invested in two characters who barely ever show an emotion. Now, another more emotional character is introduced into the story halfway through, but that has its own problems that unfortunately I can't explain without spoiling the plot. Then there's the blatant haagen commercials scattered throughout. While this is worked into the story as a plot point, the camera lingers for so long on these little cups of ice cream that are rendered in so much detail that I couldn't just take them as a passing element of the story. They significantly detracted from my ability to pay attention to the film. It was just right there in the middle of it. <sighs> Speaking of, though, um, the music, while beautiful on its own, and one of those soundtracks I would like to own, it feels extremely big. And though it certainly feels epic, it's often a bit too epic for the scene it's scoring, and occasionally just blares at you as if to demand that you feel this particular emotion. While mostly effective, and I'm not trying to over-dramatize it, it's just a bit overblown uh, at certain points. Now, there are some really interesting visuals. The story involves the suicides of teenage girls at an old apartment building that's scheduled for demolition. The crumbling building and the youthfulness of the victim, uh, victims provides for some interesting visual contrast, as does the building's mundane, comforting purpose as a house and the sinister danger of its rusted and warped ephemera. Similarly, the mentor figure makes dolls and mannequins as kind of a side job, it seems, and the parallels between the dispassionate protagonist and the dolls she stands next to are almost painfully obvious, especially in a post-ghost-in-the-shell world. The voice actors uh, do a fine job of keeping their performances cool, but not flat. The characters don't talk like robots. They do have humanity behind them. And I should say, this is just the first movie of seven. I don't want to be too harsh here. The beginning of a series is often not as strong as later installments, and that could be, you know, what, what's going on here. Overall, I feel frustrated. It's not that I hated this film, but I kept wanting one of its elements to stand out, and none of them really did. And where the film did attempt something remarkable, like those action sequences, they were insufficiently established to feel fundamentally satisfying. And where other strange, enigm enigmatic stories in anime, like Lane or Boogie Bot Phantom, left me wanting more, this just left me discontented, like watching a butterfly try to fly like a bird. If you can't fly, you should at least glide gracefully, and at least this movie within the Garden of Sinners franchise didn't quite manage that for me.